G'day and welcome to more Space Engineers Testing. Whenever I'm building a hydrogen ship, I often wonder, is it better to have a tank or is it better to have a generator? Am I going to get further by having huge amounts of ice in a generator or huge amounts of hydrogen already made up into tanks? I've thought of a few ways to look into this and test this comparison and see which one might work out best. But before we do that, let's have a look into how they might have some differences. First up, when you're thinking about ice versus hydrogen, cargo size makes an impact. The amount of hydrogen that's stored in a tank does not vary dependent upon your inventory setting. Times one, times three, or times 10 makes no difference at all. You will always get the same amount of hydrogen in there. That's not true of your oxygen generators. Right now I'm on times 10, so this small ship oxygen generator can hold 10,000 litres. But if I'm on realistic inventory settings, that's only going to hold 1,000. And that's not very much ice at all. That's a little over 2,000, 2,500 ish. You compare that to the hydrogen tank, which has been filled by the remainder of this ice. I placed 10,000 in here before, so that would mean it's going to take 8,866 units of ice or litres of ice to be able to fill a hydrogen tank, no matter your inventory settings. That's a lot more than you can hold in the oxygen generator on realistic inventory. How about the large ship? Well, it holds quite a bit more. The large ship hydrogen tank takes, we started with 300,000 units in this case, so that's 276,836, if my maths is correct, which it might not be. So that's a lot of ice. To give a bit of a demonstration of how much that is, if you needed to put that into small cargo containers on a large ship in realistic inventory, you're going to need seven of them to fill that. And on a small ship, you're going to need an additional cargo container just for ice instead of having a hydrogen tank. That cargo container plus that ice is going to weigh more than the hydrogen tank. I think. I might just be guessing. So, on realistic inventory, you're probably going to want to have tanks. You may be able to justify having a degree of oxygen generator and ice so that you can make it further distances if your tanks are big enough to make it up into orbit where you can then provide minimal thrust and still use coasting to make long distance trips. Another thing I was interested in about hydrogen tanks and oxygen generators is with the hydrogen thrusters, do they use hydrogen while they're just idling? Which, yes, they do. They very much do. So if you're going to fly around and land, you definitely want to turn off your thrusters. I can prove this if we copy this ship, which has some hydrogen in its, tank, in its oxygen generators. Place that there. Now currently this thing is flying on on uh, atmospheric thrusters. We can actually switch to our inventory view. You can see that there's 4,000 units of ice in that oxygen generator and 4,000 in that one. If we keep our atmospheric thrusters on and turn on our hydrogen thrusters, we need to turn on our generators first, then take the ship down and land it we'll be able to have an idea of how much or if we use fuel when we're idling connected to a fixed object. And now that we're down, we can then lock to the ground and we're now locked in place with no effort required from the thrusters. And you can see that the amount of ice here is still going down. Even though the ship is locked, those thrusters are doing nothing at all, of any use anyway, they're still using up our ice. So that's not so great. 
We've seen that idling thrusters need more fuel. Well, what about having more thrusters? Can you still generate the same amount of lift? So with the same two ships, we'll get a bit of altitude and then switch off our atmospheric thrusters, turn on our hydrogen thrusters and see if these two ships can both climb at the same rate or even if they can climb at all. If you require a certain amount of fuel to go to each thruster for it to work and you're then spreading that fuel out across multiple thrusters, can the oxygen generator actually keep up with all of those in a way that allows them to still function? And what I mean by this is the amount of fuel that's used per second by each thruster might overcome the amount of fuel that's generated per second by the oxygen generator. Turn them on. Turn on our hydrogen thrusters. Yep, they're all on. And then turn off our atmospheric thrusters and disconnect our merge block. Three, two, one, off, off. You can see that this one with just two thrusters, it's able to climb, it's able to hover. This one, however, it's struggling. Under the weight of all that fuel requirement, this just can't generate lift. I am trying my hardest right now and we're still going to crash into the ground. Oh, that's right. I'm in survival. I died. <laughs> Oops. <sighs> we'll respawn. Lucky that was there. What you can see from that test is that even if you have enough thrusters to generate lift, if your oxygen generator can't provide enough fuel flow, those thrusters are going to be nothing more than weights to drag your ship down. So if you're going to use oxygen generators alone to lift your ship, you're going to need to balance it properly so that you still have enough fuel flow. Now that we've looked at the thrusters a bit, let's go back to the question at hand, which is generators versus tanks. One up shot of tanks, I can see how much fuel I've got. This says I've got 36% of my maximum capacity. That's handy to know, and it's right there on my HUD. This one, however, says I've got zero, yet if we look in our generator, we have 100,000 units of ice. That's the exact same amount of fuel that's in this one. So that gives a significant advantage to the gener to the tanks in terms of ease of use. The other thing is that this tank can deliver enough flow of hydrogen to power many more thrusters than the oxygen generator can. So if we'd attached a tank to all of these millions of little thrusters, we possibly would have been able to keep that thing afloat without troubles. And you can demonstrate this relatively easily if we make these two ships the same by adding an oxygen generator to this one, which is empty, and then quickly turning this one off so it doesn't start filling the tank. Adding a tank to the top of this ship. So now both ships have exactly the same blocks. They have the exact same amount of ice on board. And if we turn off this tank, We can then demonstrate the difference in acceleration you can achieve by having full flow to your thrusters. Let's try with the slow one, the, high, the uh, generator ship. We'll set our thrust override to maximum, which is 900 kilonewtons. We'll turn our thrusters, we'll unlock our landing gear and then we'll turn our thrusters on. Three, two, one, go. What you're seeing is max override and zero lift. If you look closely at the thrust, oh, let's hop out. If you look closely at this override thruster, it's not even reaching the platform. 
It's not even damaging these blocks. Let's have a look at the one with the tank filled. Let's max this override. Let's unlock our landing gear. And let's power on our thrusters. Three, two, one, go. And you can see I can comfortably take off. That's because the amount of fuel that the tank can deliver per second is so much greater than the generator can deliver. And this means that we can comfortably fly something with a tank that cannot fly at all with just a generator. So the tanks do have big advantages. But there's one test where the generators might be able to win. And that is where they might be able to take you further if they can provide enough lift and if you're happy to not know how much fuel you've got left. Well, let's test this with large ships first and we'll leave the final testing to small ships. Small ships is I think where the generators might, might have an upper hand, but only on high inventory settings. So let's test these small ships. What we have here is three pairs of ships the first pair at the front here, they've had 20,000 units of ice in them. One of them's got it in its generator, one of them's got it in its tank. The only differences between these two ships is that, and this one has a tank, no generator, this one has a generator, no tank. And that's the same throughout. These two have 100,000 units of ice worth of fuel or ice, and these two have 400,000. Let's see how these comparisons go. What we're going to do is put our up thrusters on override. So we'll increase thrust override and decrease thrust override there. We're going to set this at 315 kilonewtons. I think that's enough for these to take off. We'll set the same on this one. Let's get our up group. Up. And then pop that on our toolbar. Something that's been brought up a lot of times and that I probably should have brought up when I was going through my tutorial on how to get to space is you can use these thrust override modifiers to be able to gradually adjust your power when pushing yourself up into space. It can make it a bit easier to get there without having to pulse press spacebar the whole time. So let's get on with the test. 20,000 units of ice. Unlock our landing gear. Turn on our thruster with 315 kilonewtons. Let's see how high we go. Hmm. Probably help if our generator was on. And away we don't. More. Right. So, even with a fairly minimal ship, this thing can't take off. We do not have enough thrust from the fuel flow from our oxygen generator to even take off. Right. Well, if you've only got one generator, this is definitely not going to work. Let's turn off these thrusters. Let's add a second generator. I'm going to need to reset our fuel amount. So we'll leave 10,000 in that generator. put 10,000 in the other one. So we've got half the fuel in each. And let's see if that's enough for, to get us off the ground. Turn on our thrust. Unlock our landing gear. There we go. 315. Let's see how high we go. What you can see here is that for every extra bit of thrust you need, you're going to have to add more generators. 
These generators will be fine if we're in space because we don't need overwhelming acceleration. We can just handle a bit of dawdling and then gradually build up some speed because we don't have to deal with gravity slowing us down or having to fight against it to even get off the ground. But on a planet, you're going to need that thrust. So you would need a lot of generators to lift a ship of any reasonable size. It's probably not practical. So how high up have we gotten so far? We're at 4,000 meters and how much fuel have we got left? Still got 7,000, so I've only used up a bit over 25%. It's not too bad. I'm leaving the thrust level so that we can make these tests roughly equal between the two ships. Apart from the fact that these have this one has generators and the other one has tanks. And we'll compare how high each one goes once they run out of fuel. So we're at 10,000 meters and how much fuel have we got left? Just under half. And we're at 20,000. How much do we have left now? Oh, we're almost out. 500. 300. Odd skipping ahead and not. And... We're out of ice. At 22,000 meters we ran out of ice. How high will this carry us? We're not quite going to make it to orbit. But with enough fuel you could see that this would be feasible with something like this. 24747. Alright. That's not too bad. Let's see if the tank can do any better. We'll use some of our creative tools and we'll teleport back down. Ooh. I should have turned my dampeners on. Whoops. Note to self, when teleporting, you maintain your current speed. So let's hop in our one with our hydrogen tank. Let's turn our thrust override up to 315, where it was on the other one. Let's unlock our landing gear. And let's shoot off into space. For this one, We'll just use our HUD and our 7% of fuel that remains. So we should get a bit of a better idea of how far we're going to go. These tests, I really struggled to think of ways to make it as equal as possible between the two options. But there are so many factors that impact on which one's going to perform best. The number of thrusters you've got, the number of weight each block takes, the number of weight of ice you use, it might depend on how much ice you use. And it's going to depend on which grid size as well. So even if these tests aren't exactly equal or direct comparisons, hopefully the comparisons that I have been doing will be useful in terms of guiding what you're going to put on your ship. It looks like we might not make it quite so far into space. So it seems even with two generators, their mass doesn't quite make up for the mass of a large ship hydrogen tank. But I could be wrong. We're up to 14,000 meters now. We've got 3% of our fuel left, 2%. It might make it past that 23747 mark that the generators made but I'm suspicious it's not going to. The generators may still not be actually generating the full thrust that we've got set. Whereas the tank, it is going to provide that full thrust until the very last moment when it runs out. I stuffed up there, it was 24747, but the result remains the same. Oh, actually I might have called it too early. We've still got fuel left and we've cracked 20,000. Oh wow. I definitely called this too early. The tank is the victor. So even with all those other advantages on the side of the generators, because we need two of them, I suspect they actually do weigh more. Well, isn't that interesting? 
We've looked at large ships and although we didn't test all the weights, I think we can hand the victory over to the tanks. You need so much thrust to lift a large ship grid that the hydrogen generators, the oxygen generators, they really don't do enough. But on small ships you don't need quite so much thrust. So maybe over here is where the oxygen generators might shine. What we've got here is six different ships connected by merge blocks. The way we're going to run this test is to see which one can hover for the longest. And it'll be comparing each pair. All of these ships are identical except for the fact that some of them have generators and some of them have tanks. This one has a thousand units of ice, no tank. This one has a thousand units of ice in hydrogen in its tank. 8,000, 8,000, 16,000, 16,000. All of them have two upwards thrusters and all of them have a single gyroscope. All of our generators are on. Let's turn on our thrusters. And let's take off. And we'll slide backwards a bit. And we'll watch our large ship crash behind us. And then we'll disconnect our merge blocks. Three, two, one, disconnect. Now we can see they're all disconnected. So they're all hovering under their own power. This one's going to be a bit of a waiting game. With each pair, I don't know which one of them is going to drop first. So this could end up quite interesting. This will be a test of how much, of how long they can provide enough fuel for. If we have a close look at the amount of thrust plume that's coming from each of these ships, you can see that this one's a bit smaller than this one. That suggests to me that the tank is heavier than the oxygen generator. And it's the same with this pair, and it's the same with this pair. I don't know if that means that these are using significantly more fuel or not. Oh, we've lost our first tank. Okay, with a thousand units, that puts the win onto this little gem here. Now, this is probably not ideal. Oh dear. That wasn't good. I'm not sure why that dropped. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. So, best out of three, first has gone to the oxygen generators. I know this is probably going to have a negative impact on the validity of this test, but let's just bring this one back up. The advantage of this test is that each of the ships is only using the amount of thrust exactly required to keep it afloat. Unlike the test of trying to go up to the maximum altitude, where you'll be pushing against the speed ceiling, which should be impacted by the amount of mass you're pushing upwards, but might not be as accurate as this. So this is really a test of endurance and a test of endurance versus the mass difference. So this should give the biggest possible advantage to the generators. As they use up more fuel, they become lighter, which means they need less fuel to keep themselves aloft. Oh, there we go. We lost another contender. That is two for the generators, none for the tanks when it comes to small ships. Large ships, tanks still win, but small ships, generators have an upside. They do last longer. So on a small ship with high inventory settings, you're probably going to be better off with a generator. Let's see if that still holds true with really high amounts of ice though. Looking at those exhaust plumes from those two hydrogen thrusters, I'd say yes. Yes, it does have an advantage. I reckon we're going to lose those that double tanked ship well before we lose the other one. 
interestingly, will we lose the one that had half as much fuel before we lose the double tank one? Oh, disappointing. It didn't quite beat out this one. How much fuel does this have left? 16%. Started off with 90. Can the tanks pull out a last minute victory here? We've still got. Oh. No, they definitely can't. We still have eight, over 8,000 units of ice. We've still got more than half the ice left in this ship that it started with. Whereas this one, these tanks started at close to 90% full. And they've now got 12% left. I think. We can easily call the victory to the generators for small grids. One thing, if you're wondering why I didn't test these two, that's because they have a huge amount of ice. And if we put this extra generator on board, oh, not like that, like that. And we fill it with as much ice as it can take, excellent. Make sure this generator's turned on. Don't worry, we'll see those explode. We hop in, turn on our thrusters, unlock our landing gear. With this much weight of ice, we can't take off. However, with the same amount of ice in a tank, or in two tanks, turn on our thrusters, turn off our landing gear, we can take off comfortably. We can fly around. And to me, that comfortably hands the large ship victory to the tanks. Because they are just simply so much more practical. Head back over here. 4% of our fuel left. And how much in ours? Still just under half. What we've seen here is that, dependent on the size of your grid, dependent on the inventory settings you're playing, and dependent on where you want to go, whether it's in space or whether you have to move around on a planet, you're going to want to consider what's best for you and what's best for what you're trying to do. There will be situations where tanks are better. There will be situations where generators are better. There will be situations where a mix of the two is better. But if you just want a small ship and you just want to get to space, you really can't go past generators. These will take you so much further and get you there and back. Well, as long as they can actually get you off the ground and you don't need 20 thrusters to do that. If you want to make something tiny, Stick with a generator. You might even be able to fit a few more of them, depending on the shape of your vessel, than you would be able to fit one of the tanks, because the tanks are a bit cumbersome and a bit awkward to fit. If you've got any suggestions on further tests we should do to compare these two, or other things you'd like to see compared, please let me know. As always, there's plenty more to come, so I'll see you then.